Thailand, an Asian country with a population of over 69 million inhabitants, is famous for its tropical beaches, royal palaces, and ancient temples. It welcomes around 6 million tourists annually in its various cities and 1,430 islands. Thailand is known as the land of smiles and is home to millions of Buddhists, as well as at least a tenth of all animal species on the planet. However, Thailand is also a country with very strict laws and severe penalties for those who break the rules of this society, whether they are foreigners or Thais. Ending up behind bars in this country can be relatively straightforward, and it's an experience you would surely not wish to live through. Join us on this new extraordinary walk where you will learn how the penal system in Thailand operates and the daily life of its inmates. According to the latest data, as reported in an article by journalist Monse Martinez for El Periodico in August 2023, there are 143 prisons in Thailand. One of the main ones is Bang Kwang, known as Bangkok Hilton or the Big Tiger due to its reputation as an extremely dangerous place. This and other prisons in the country have characteristics that, on one hand, deviate from many internationally established laws to protect the rights of inmates and, on the other hand, resemble the images we see in Hollywood movies about prisons. For the inhabitants of these prisons, daily life is, in their own words, hellish. In prisons, they must wear shackles of at least 4 kilograms, especially if they are in common areas. Everyone must have short hair and wear a uniform, the color of which varies according to the level of the sentence they must serve. There are no beds, everyone must sleep on the floor, usually sitting due to the incredible overcrowding. Some don't even have space and must sleep standing up. At best, they receive three blankets to use as a pillow, mattress, and blanket. Cleanliness of the spaces is not given enough attention, with cells whose toilets are simply holes in the floor. Food is insufficient and often spoiled. Schedules are very strict for everything, and there is limited access to showers. Bad odors are constant, and many inmates are sick without the possibility of isolation. They are forced to work under threat of injury or even death. Moreover, there is little credibility and in information regarding the legal status of these individuals' legal proceedings. According to foreigners who have experienced the misfortune of being trapped inside these prisons, as reported in a study conducted by journalist Laura Rodrigo in August 2023, the day begins at 6 a.m. with a whistle that orders all inmates to wake up and be alert. At 6.45 a.m., the first of several prisoner counts takes place, after which they are ordered to go to the bathroom, both to freshen up and attend to their needs. The shower time is regulated by a whistle which indicates to 15 inmates per shower that it's their turn to get wet, soap up, and then rinse off the soap. This is done to control water reserves in each prison. At 8.30 a.m., after singing the national anthem, the inmates have breakfast, which some have described as unpleasant rice and foul-smelling broth. It's typically a dish containing rice and chicken bones. For those criminals who can afford some luxuries, sponsored by a prison system also known for its corruption levels, they can access an additional plate of food for 3 euros or its equivalent in dollars or national currency. After breakfast time, these individuals must return to their cells, where they stay until 2 p.m. At that time, they are given the opportunity to engage in physical activities, sports, reading, and socializing. There is no lunch, except for those who can pay a bribe. Recreation time ends at 4 p.m., at which point the inmates must return to their cells until 9 p.m., when they are required to rest. There is no dinner either. An important point, drawn from real testimonies, is that during the day, everyone is subjected to various forms of aggression by security officers, injuries, extortion, torture, etc. These situations are part of the daily lives of these individuals, day after day, throughout their stay there. Former prisoners argue that this happens with the intention of obtaining illicit benefits from the inmates themselves. Australian Warren Fellows, in his book The Damage Done, recounts how security officers in these prisons would request and receive bribes and constantly extort inmates, claiming that if they did not comply with their demands, their names would be on the list for lethal injections. In this country, the greatest penalty that can be paid in a prison can not only be a life sentence but also death. 
In this country, the penalties are quite severe, and some of them have even been challenged by high-level organizations such as the United Nations and the World Prison Brief, especially penalties related to offenses involving products considered addictive, from alcohol to hard drugs. According to studies conducted by Pascal Tangue, who was the deputy director of the Law Enforcement and HIV Network until 2015 and currently supports various civil society organizations and United Nations agencies in changing the way drugs are treated in Asia, punishments for offenses like drug consumption or possession need to change in Thailand as they lack a fair criterion for those ending up in prisons. For example, a few years ago, a young woman received a 25-year prison sentence for crossing the border between Laos and Thailand with one and a half tablets of methamphetamine, Yaba. The same happened to two young men who were sentenced to life imprisonment for possession of a single pill found in the car they had traveled from Thailand to Laos. According to the expert, such sentences are common in the Thai context. I interviewed 24 inmates who had received sentences totaling 825 years in prison, and four death sentences, for the possession of a total of 138 amphetamine tablets, which amounts to a six-year prison sentence for each confiscated pill. Globally, Thailand is an outlier when it comes to these issues. The Global Commission on Drug Policy pointed out Thailand for the devastating consequences of strict and aggressive practices used by law enforcement agencies targeting drug users. The Institute for Crime and Justice Research has also published various studies on sentencing laws and practices in 10 different jurisdictions, which also places Thailand at the international extreme in terms of its sentencing system for drug importation. The research from the mentioned institute shows that an offense involving the import of 400 grams of heroin would likely result in a sentence of between 6 months and 20 years in 9 of the countries studied in Asia and Europe, but in Thailand, it would carry a life sentence or the death penalty. In addition to all of this, if you were in Thailand, you would need to be careful and very aware of your actions, as many actions could be considered offenses and lead to many years of imprisonment. For example, stealing food, even just a loaf of bread, is considered a crime with a penalty of 1 to 5 years. Walking shirtless could also be grounds for detention and is considered highly disrespectful. Gambling is punishable by imprisonment, whether in person or through online means. Providing sexual services carries a sentence of up to 20 years, and if you are a user of these services, you could face up to three years behind bars. Anti-religious actions are also sanctioned in Thailand. Dressing up as a monk carries a one-year prison sentence. Being disrespectful in a temple, such as sitting with your feet pointing towards a Buddha image, can result in a penalty. Being a monarchic country, defamation of the crown can be punished with imprisonment and even death, this offense is called Lace Majesty and has been criticized by many international organizations for years. According to reports from the World Prison Brief, there is very little information about how judicial decisions are made in Thailand, which is not surprising because, unlike other countries, Thailand does not have public guidelines or transparent processes for imposing sentences. Thai sentences are based on an informal and confidential document called Yi Talk, which only judges can access and does not have formal mechanisms for oversight and balance in its implementation. Even in the country's penal code, it does not specify what the courts should consider to determine a precise sentence length within the ranges provided by the law for each offense. Let's talk about some recent controversies. In early August 2023, the case of Daniel Sancho, a 29-year-old Spanish chef and son of actor Rodolfo Sancho, accused of premeditated murder and concealing evidence against surgeon Edwin Arrieta on Koh Phangan Island, Thailand, came to light. After pleading guilty, Sancho was arrested on August 5th and incarcerated in Koh Samui Prison. According to the police, Sancho arrived on the island on July 31st and met Arrieta on August 2nd. After Arietta's disappearance, human remains were found on the island, specifically a pelvis and a bag of fertilizer. The next day, a leg was found in a garbage dump, and on Friday, August 4th, Sancho became a suspect. Finally, after being questioned on August 5th, Sancho confessed to the crime, claiming he acted in self-defense due to unrequited obsession from Arietta. After investigations by the island authorities, it was determined that the crime had been premeditated, Sancho had bought gloves, plastic bags, knives, cleaning products, and other items from local stores days before the crime. 
inconclusive estimates by the police explain that the motivations for this act revolve around alleged romantic links, blackmail, and even financial motivation. Currently, the Thai police have requested the death penalty from the judges, although according to Sancho's lawyers, the prosecution has not yet determined the exact sentence for the person who now resides in Koh Samui prison and hopes to return to his home country, Spain. Thus, amid criticisms and very ineffective progress in criminal matters, lies the prison system in Thailand, an ancient country, a destination for thousands of tourists each year seeking fun and spirituality in its lands, but sometimes it can become their permanent residence, behind bars, especially if they do not comply with the laws. And with this chilling recent case in Thailand, we have reached the end of our extraordinary walk today. If you've made it this far, please give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Until our next walk.